the typical assemblage for late Neolithic in the area. Uh, what you see here is uh, collected during the previous days of excavations, this pottery and this lithic, uh, lithic uh, implements that you can see here were collected both uh, during the excavation but also uh, during the walk in the field on this small section that we are allowed to walk in the, between the car and the edge of our uh, trench. Uh, as you all know, you are here on a late Neolithic site. Late Neolithic period in this area, in Slavonia, is called Sopot culture. Sopot culture uh, is well archaeological period uh, defined uh, during uh, 50s and 60s, 60s uh, as a specific as a specific assemblage for this uh, for this period. Uh, you all know about Vincha. Uh, Vincha is late Neolithic uh, culture that is spread in big parts of southeastern Europe, and its most famous and uh, the site that it got the name to the entire culture is Vincha in uh, well in the town of Belgrade basically. And uh, there are many uh, many debates and arguments about the relationship with Sopot and Vincha culture whether they are two separate entities and uh, or whether they could be local manifestations in uh, terms of shapes uh, of pottery decorations um, the uh, other specific types such as figurines um, and well you can see in the literature many arguments but uh, one thing is very important to mention that uh, the uh, development of archaeology both in Croatia and Serbia has strong roots in national archaeologists. National archaeologists, not just nationalistic archaeologists, which is sometimes even invisible side effect, but in terms of borders, the control, the universities, the universities, the researchers were based in their respective countries and uh, their authorities <laughs> and interest stopped at the border. So at present we have almost complete um, overlap between the current border between Serbia and Croatia and Sopot and Vincha culture, which is probably not likely in all, um, in all of its length in any case. There are a few sites in Eastern Croatia that are claimed that are Vincha culture, but they were claimed that they, it was in the very late phases uh, connected with the shrinking of Vincha and some major collapses of the societies. But uh, we can, by starting to work together in the recent years between Serbian and Croatian archaeologists and looking at these assemblages not only by its most characteristic and most famous speeches, uh, pieces such as uh, lids uh, or uh, anthropomorphic and zoomorphic figurines, but this everyday assemblage, we see many resemblance. And okay, I cannot give you any conclusion, but I can tell you definitely that when colleagues from Serbia see this material, they would say it's winch. Mm. And well, I was joking, like Sopot culture is a poor man's vincha because they're not, <laughs> <laughs> not those best pieces that you will see. But the ornaments, the technology uh, of uh, firing the shapes, the chronology, uh, stone tools, organization of a settlement are very much similar. So I will leave you to make your own conclusions. Uh, what uh, I can say you about this, uh, we, we don't have many specific pieces with the ornaments that are very characteristic for this period. We have this one found so far with these uh, two dots and it is very typical for this area. It is present uh, on the site uh, Preslatinci that we will visit on uh, Friday uh, and uh, it was published in the 80s as a surface find. Uh, last year we had excavations there and we also find uh, this type of ornament and it is also found in Jakovo Ivandvor site which is now the part of the uh, motorway that is uh, crossing here. So we can say that is really typical ornament for this 
for this period. The other very characteristic uh, type that we found, not ornament, but the type, are uh, vessels on the foot. That we have several examples here, and you can also uh, look at them. These type of handles, sorry, <laughs> these type of handles. The decorations with fingerprints on coarse pottery which is characteristic for all periods, basically. Um, but when you combine the shape of a vessel, uh, the technology of uh, firing, the color, and the ornament, you can say, okay, it belongs to Sopot culture. This is also one of uh, typical small handles for the period. And what is most characteristic, without specific characteristics, is the surface. The surface is polished and black. Some of them are better polished, some of them are not so good. But polished black surface is something that is really characteristic. All of you know that for Vincha culture, but it's very common in Sopot culture also. Of course, there are other types of coarse pottery with colors like this. But when we have all them combined together, it is really easy to distinguish them in this period, for, for example, from previous periods. Uh, Mansa here is a, an, an, an expert on pottery, so jump in any time if you feel uh, like it. But for example, in terms of uh, the mixture for, uh, for pottery, the raw material, uh, in previous periods they were much more organic additives, mm -hmm. and here they are much more... Uh, mineral, mineral no. yeah and then every period has some specific mixtures that is in the end show even in those tiny pieces of pottery that we find so that is how we distinguish them you are all archaeologists you know them uh, and I want to stress out here that it is still very important tool for archaeology I know that typology is very boring and uh, that uh, many people regard it as outdated, but it's still our most valuable chronological tool. You still have to know the pottery in order to be able to make the archaeological interpretation, because sometimes you do don't have uh, the luxury of radiocarbon dates. Maybe you don't have the money or you don't have the sample. For example, on Press Latin, see, they just wrote me an email you sent us seven samples of charcoal, none of them worked. Mm -hmm. And there were no bones because the, car uh, the, uh, the soil is very bad for preservation of mm -hmm. organic material. So if we didn't have there the characteristic types of pottery for that period, and of course you cannot date it for like 50 years, but it doesn't even matter, it's like thousands of years old. So uh, this is the essence of our work. This is what differs us from other professions that are dealing with the soil. And it's really important to have on that basic level the knowledge of recognition of archaeological material. So don't neglect it while studying. <laughs> <laughs> like some general observations because, yeah, pottery is maybe, even the technology is people like, it's yeah. more fancy but still, yeah, but at the end you're looking, when you uh, take a piece in your hand, you're looking from typological point of view and technological. Yes. And you're combining these two and then you know, maybe you don't know that you are doing it, but actually but you, you are, are doing, doing this. Yeah. You are uh, applying uh, various types of knowledge and mm -hmm. characteristic, morphological characteristics of this, the raw material, all the processes uh, that uh, led up to this, um, to those pieces to look like they are. And you can also see here mm -hmm. some markings. I made them. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to uh, point out that uh, for you not to be confused. I made them because the pottery <coughs> is kind of soft. And uh, as, yes, and I, as I was washing it, I was washing it uh, late night uh, yesterday and I didn't have the time to soak it in the water and then 
like it's smooth so I had to brush it a little bit harder so I made those ornaments uh -huh. and uh, as uh, I hope that you all notice them as something strange because it's nothing so not something that appears on soap mm -hmm. culture pottery you can see similar things on some later <laughs> stuff but not here so I'm the author of this <laughs> yeah uh, okay so the pottery is like basic chronological tool then we have other stuff that can help us confirm uh, the attribution to a certain period stuff like this that were found usually in the houses and uh, some uh, some of them are interpreted as parts of the looms but also as uh, parts that were holding uh, some construction stuff in the buildings or some draperies and so on and this shape is also very typical for late Neolithic. There is a hole here. And of course, in the end, we have stone tools. Here we gathered stone tools. These are the surface founts. And here are the founts, uh, finds from the, uh, from the ditch that we uh, excavated. It is typical assemblage for the period. Uh, also here we see typological characteristics, but many other uh, characteristics like raw materials um, in the first place. Uh, this is typical assemblage for this period and the raw material used is uh, the pebbles, uh, uh, the pebbles that uh, were eroded from the Bosnian mountains, from the Ophiolite zone. I guess uh, Petrus knows a lot about it since he also worked in Bosnia and it's the same stones, it's basically the same rocks uh, formed in the same period and uh, many of them were eroded by uh, those rocks, uh, those layers uh, were eroded by the activities of Bosna, Vrbas and Duna rivers and those pebbles were accumulated in the bands of Sava river. So in Bosnia you can find both uh, primary deposits and secondary deposits and what we know from cortexes on our uh, lithic assemblages here is that they used mo uh, mostly secondary deposits in terms of pebbles. Uh, how can we say that? Uh, you can pass it along on cortex that is uh, made by the transportation uh, mm -hmm. in the water while those rocks were constantly hurting each other <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's hot. Um, it leaves specific marks specific ridges that you can see here mm -hmm. so it's like fluvial type of cortex you if you want to add something jump in any time also Petros uh, I cannot say something about the cortex but generally the material is very common with the assemblages we've seen in Banja Luka, and I think from some research we have done in literature, there are specific locations that they estimate both in Serbia and, and Bosnia that the material is similar. Yes. So maybe yeah. they have either secondary or primary yes. source positions. Yes. There, uh, yeah, yeah, as I said, in Bosnia there are both uh, primary and secondary source positions. Uh, here people mostly use, mostly use this about Bosnia, I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll get to it uh, someday probably. Uh, and uh, we have also deposits uh, that our students will visit next week uh, of that same geological zone, it's called the Ophiolithic zone, that stretches from Hungary till the uh, sea, uh, in Greece it goes into the sea. Uh, it was formed uh, during Jurassic, uh, there are uh, mostly uh, deposits from Jurassic and Triassic period with big layers of radiolarites so most of them the geological analysis proved that most of them are radiolarites of jurassic and triassic age from that uh, from that zone and it stretches really widely so it it is really hard to pinpoint a specific source because in geological terms when it was formed at the bottom of the sea the accumulation of radiolaria it was all like the same spot so uh, but at least we know the, 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 the origin of source origin. So uh, the characteristic tools that uh, 
appear in Sopot culture are uh, scrapers, truncations, and simple, uh, simple tools on uh, blades. Uh, and, uh, but there are also scrapers on the flake that are quite common that uh, we didn't find here yet. This is really a small assemblage and as you can see most of those uh, most of those artifacts are shaped into some uh, tool so we can uh, see if, um, we can uh, regard them as complete uh, tools which is also quite common thing for Sopot culture even on big sites and we see here a big dif difference between earlier periods like Neolithic when on most sites you had some kind of production activity and on Sopot sites there is only a few of them where there was like uh, all stages of production on many sites uh, people were just using the complete tools that they uh, obtained uh, obtained uh, elsewhere so there is not a large number of um, production based uh, but there are also sites with high intense production activity like Kruševica, uh, near Sava, near Slavonski Brod or Slavče in Nova Gradiška, they have really a workshop, workshop assemblages. Um, and of <coughs> course uh, you could see pieces of which are not characteristic just for this period but also for the entire Neolithic and maybe even later. The uh, remains of the house constructions, you know that they were constructed from um, bottle and daub, where there are some branches that were covered in mud, and if they uh, unfortunately got caught up in fire, then they remain like this, and you can see uh, the remains of the pieces. There are much more uh, bigger pieces of daub and we will go through them last day, it's now in our current uh, mm. modern ditch. I guess that's it.